Greetings church Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio I pray that your faith have failed you not I pray that you know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is closer than he ever have been Even than when we first believed And I pray That you know he's the good shepherd That he'll lead the 99 To go and rescue the one that is lost I pray that you know he's faithful He's coming soon Church, let us remember, it's time for us to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get you, because the end is now. Yes, beloved, we're not waiting on the end time to get you, because the end is Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, good to gather with you again. Um, I hope it's, I hope all is well and Christ Jesus have been uh, being exalted in your life and uh, you've been growing in your faithfulness according to God's will and his purpose. And that will is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And I pray that no matter what circumstance you go through, you know that Christ Jesus loves you deeply. Okay. And I pray that you understand that we understand that in all things, he is the good shepherd. Oh, thank you. That he loves us so greatly that it can be 99 sheep together, but he'll leave the 99 to go and rescue one who is lost. And therefore, the word became flesh that me, we, that one lost sheep, Jesus, that sheep, could make it to the eternal kingdom of God. Okay? Church, um, I have a word for you today. It's a heavy word, but it's needed. And before we get into the word, let's pray so the Lord can prepare our hearts to put it in a place it needs to be, to receive all, all. That we have all that we have to uh, all that he have to pour into us. Okay, church, let's pray. Dear heavenly and wise Father, we repent of our sins, Lord. Please forgive us of our sins. Thank you for being our daddy. Thank you for giving you for giving us your son that we may be saved from the condemnation of our own sin, Lord. We thank you for becoming flesh and bear witness of the Father in heaven that we may know the ways of God in you, Lord Jesus. Forgive us our sin. Lord, we pray that you would just minister to us so deeply right now, Lord, that we would get a revelation of who you are and how you expect for us to walk according to your will, that we may be with you forevermore, Lord. Lord, break us from a, break us out of the place of complacency. Bring us out of the place of doubt, out of the place of our fear. Bring us away from every deception, everything that keeps us bound and hindered from doing your will, Lord. Lord, we pray that your truth will go forward today. We pray that they bright light, which is you, Lord, will shine deeply into us that expose every dark place that we return from it that we may not sin against you, Lord. Speak life 
voice to us, speak life to us today. Give us life today, which is you, Lord. Transform our by the hands of your spirit today, Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, man, let's get into this word, man. Man, and the Lord been speaking so heavy, man. He been speaking so heavy, man, showing so many heavy things. Man, brothers and sisters, it's so heavy, man. And as I consider all, as I consider all that the Lord have been showing, man, it even more so that we should be humble at his feet. And expose his glory by living righteously according to his will and his purpose, man. That God is so holy, God is so sovereign, that God is so powerful that if man had an idea, if we would get an in-depth revelation of how holy and how powerful our God is and how much he loves us, then it would cause us to sit, submit even more to his feet, but also give a greater reverence and a respect of who he is because he is a true, living, holy God. Oh, man. Okay. And the Lord been speaking to me in so many ways, man. He been exposing his glory, man, that we might know him and operate in his truth by his spirit. Jesus, man. And as I've been spending time with the Lord, the Lord took me to Psalms 2. And the Lord started speaking to me. Oh. He says, son, Psalm 2, verse 1, he says, son, oh, man. He says, son, why do the nations rebel? And when God asks you a question, because we got to write, a, we got to write our Psalms here asking a question, and then the Lord go to speaking to me. And whenever the Lord asks you a question, he's not asking you a question as if he don't know who. But he asking you a question to bring you to revelation of what he's saying to you concerning his heart. And as I was spending time with the Lord, he was speaking these questions to me, but it was exposing the deep place in his heart. Man. And the Lord says, son, why do the nations rebel and the people's plot in vain? Oh, man, the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers consp conspire together against the Lord. Oh, man. And his anointed one. Who is that anointed one? Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Oh, man look how the world today may mock the lord and conspire so many things even conspire conspire so many things against the lord and even trying to to uh to kill those who bear witness to his name okay and the lord said verse three let us tear off their chains and free ourselves from their restraints oh man Listen what, listen what the Lord said now. He said the kings of the earth, the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers conspire together against the Lord and his anointed one. Let let us tear. Listen, listen what he said next. Let us tear off their chains and free ourselves from their restraints. The one enthroned and, uh, and free ourselves from the straight. Free ourselves from their restraints. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord ridicules them. Then he speaks to them in his anger and terrifies the terrifies them with his wrath. Oh man. He have consecrated my king, O Zion, my holy one. I will declare the Lord decree. He said to me, You are my son today. I have become your father. Ask, ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance and the end of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like pottery. Oh man, Jesus, what 
when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, John the Baptist, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended on him as a dove, and the Father said, Today I have begotten thee, you are my son. <laughs> And the Lord is talking about Christ Jesus that when he comes, he's going to he's going to break every enemy like pottery. Oh, man. See, right now they conspiring against the Lord. They more they that the, the nations rage. They are rebelling against the uh, rebelling against the Lord. The one who sits on the throne in heaven. But as they are doing these three, uh, uh, but as they are doing these things. The king of heaven, Christ Jesus, is sitting on a throne in heaven laughing at the wisdom of man because they think they wiser than God. But in reality, God is so far ahead of them that they can't even comprehend how far he ahead. Jesus, man. And the king who sits on the throne in heaven laughs. The Lord ridicules them. He laughs at the wisdom of man. Then he speaks to them in his anger. Oh, man. So the Lord laughed at the wisdom of man. Then he speaks to them in their anger because they disobey the gospel. And, and this is what he said. He, he laughs at them. He ridicules them. He speaks to them in his anger out of their rebellion. Because see, Christ Jesus have came and given his life on the cross. Therefore, there is no excuse for man. The only thing the excuse for man is if they simply reject the gospel. And this world is in a place where is it, it is it, it is rejecting the gospel, conspiring against the Lord, the Holy One of God, who died for the gospel, who is Christ Jesus, who was raised for the gospel. But guess what? The Lord said he speaks to them in his anger. He terrifies them in his wrath. Man. And the Lord said, I declare a decree. I declare a decree. He said, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nation your heritage. Every nation that think they are high will be made low. Oh, man. Why? Because everything right now in the hour, Jesus is a few years away and God is bringing everything up on the subjection of his feet. So every nation that is proud will be brought low. God will terrify them in his wrath. They will be broken like pottery, says the Lord God Almighty. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. And so the Lord brought back to my room. He says, son, why do the nation rebel? Okay. And right now, Though these nations are conspiring conspiring against the Lord, they are conspiring against the Lord. And the Lord is sharpening his sword. Oh, man. The world is conspiring against the Lord and he is sharpening his sword for battle. Oh, man. Church, let us not conform to this world. Because if we conform to this world, we're going to be on the opposite end of the sword. Because if we conform to this world, then we will conspire against the Lord like this world does. Oh, man. Because, see, this world conspire against the Lord because they disobey the gospel. And, church, if we know the truth and disobey the gospel, then out of being friends with this world, we conspire against the Lord. And if we conspire against the Lord, then we're going to be at the end of that sword as he sharpened it, and as he sharpened sharpen it, he will cut everything to pieces and break it like pottery. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. And again, the Lord said, why do the nations rebel? Why do the nations rebel when I have given my all, when I have given my son to save them from their own sin? Oh, man. Therefore, the Lord said, I will, I, will, I will laugh at the wisdom of men. I will laugh and ridicule them. I will speak to them in my anger because they have rebelled against my gospel. What do we say, church? We say, let us humble ourselves at the feet of Jesus because he loved us greatly. And that love came, that love was revealed through a great sacrifice that we may not be on the edge of that sword that is being sharpened for all those that are unrighteous. Jesus. Because if I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord been speaking to my son, I love my children. Oh, man. 
as I was sitting on the couch, looking in the eyes of my little son, he's three years old. And it's just this overflowing love in my heart for him, how he's just such a living being. He's so full of life, so in love with his parent. And I'm like, man, I love my child. And as I look at my son, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about the father heart. He says, son, you see how your son look? You see it? You see your son? You see the love I have in your heart for your child. Son, like so, think about how my son who knew no sin never committed a sin i looked at him the same way you looking at your son oh man that my son never did nothing wrong but i sent him in the earth to redeem and bring all those who was far away from me back to me so they could be my children through him because they rebelled against me because they rebelled against them i had to give my one and only son that i overflow with love for so that he can save man from their sin oh man and i consider how much I love my son in this life. I can't even I can't even come to close to imagine how much a great and holy God loved his son perfectly. And his son never committed sin, was perfect. And he had to give him away that his other children may not perish from their own sin. Oh man. And as I consider that, it grieves my heart how nations can rebel. That's why it's important, church, that we have to walk in repentance to the grace that we have received, that we may not walk in rebellion as as we were before we met the cross. Because if we know the truth and we conform to this world, then we were falling back into a place of rebellion as if we were before the cross. Oh, man. And the Lord said, there is no more sacrifice can be made for those who have tasted the heavenly gift. You know what? Taste the Holy Spirit and conform to this word and turn back to a place that I rescued them from. The Lord said, "We in that way we trample under the feet the testimony of Christ Jesus if we do that. And as a result, there is no more sacrifice because we bring shame to the name of the Lord. Man, this is a serious account. And the Lord said, son, I'm sharpening my sword. Oh, and as he said that I'm sharp in the sword, he said, son, my axe is already at the root of the tree, son. Every tree that is not bearing fruit is getting cut down. Oh, man. He said, son. He said, son, men don't follow in their actions first. They follow in their heart first. Oh, so he said, son, my axe is already rooted at the root of the trees. When my son hit the cross, Jesus. My axe is already rooted the trees. My son is already clearing his threshing floor for the kingdom of heaven. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And the Lord said, even right now, son, who will be that faithful and wise servant of bearing the gospel that he may receive his reward in due season because he lived faithfully according to my testimony? Jesus, man. And as I contemplate this, it increased my love of God because I'm like, Lord, I know you love me, but Lord, I know your love is holy and I respect your love, Lord. And because I respect your love and, and because I know how holy you are and because I know how righteous and just you are, that you would give yourself away for me who sin. It makes it make your it make me overflow in my heart, daddy, that. You are so holy. You are so just that you would taste death for me because you didn't want me to experience your wrath. Oh, man. Church, let us be the gospel that we may live unto the power of God and not receive the wrath of God. Okay? Why? Because he loved us greatly. He don't want us to receive wrath. That's why he gave us himself. Jesus. God gave us himself in his son that we would not have to. God don't want us to spirit his wrath. The Lord don't want us to experience it around. He don't want none of us to perish. So church, let us walk faithfully according to his will because there will be a mandate that all those who are unrighteous will receive that wrath because he is holy and he's just. Okay. So as I was spending time with the Lord even more, I was in prayer. I was in prayer and, um, as our prayer, man, as I fell into prayer, the Lord, the, the, the Lord 
remove, remove. The Lord took me into a different place in his spirit, man. When he took me in his spirit, he revealed endless fire. In this vision, I seen endless fire. Oh, man. And this is not the fire that this world can. Oh, man. This is not the fire that this world is used to. Used to. This is not the fire that this. This is not fire that uh, this world can contain. But this is a holy, unquenchable fire. As I went into prayer with the Lord, he showed me endless fire. So the Lord is sharpening his sword. And then he showed me in a vision, endless fire. And as he take me in the spirit, as he removed the blindness off, as he removed the blindness off my eyes, I see in the spirit and I see endless fire. Oh, man. What do we say? Our brother Peter spoke by the spirit, said this world, this world it's it is it, it's, it's going to be consumed by fire. This fire is being stored up for the great day of the Lord. And in this vision, I seen endless fire that no man can quench. Oh, man. What did we say, church? Church, I appeal to you, brother and sister. The Lord, take me in the spirit and I see endless fire that no man on this earth can quench. The only way to escape it. It's through the obedience of the gospel, through the grace that the Lord have given us. Okay. Second, the Lord broke down also because this vision was twofold, but his vision also gave another revelation about what's going on in this fiery vision that he showed. On one hand, he showed endless and unquenchable fire for those that are for those that are unrighteous but also in his vision in his in his train there was tra there, there was chariots of fire oh man there were chariots of fire oh man and as and as the lord revealed to me in his vision it, uh chariots of fire he later took me to a revelation took me to second kings 6 17 Oh, man, church and church. Let us find confidence in the Lord. OK, so let's go. Let's go to what the Lord showed, man. About the chariots of fire, man. The chariots of fire, what the Lord showed, man. Second King. Second King. Second King 617. And it's about the prophet uh, Elisha. The prophet Elisha. Elisha was in a um, in a vision. He go. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, verse six, uh, Second Kings six fifteen. He said, "When the servant, when the servant of the man of God got up early and went out, he discovered an army with horses and chariots surrounding the city. So he asked Elisha, "Oh my master, what are we to do?'" Elisha said, don't be afraid for those who are with us outnumber those who are with them. Oh, man, church, let's find confidence. This verse 17, then Elisha prayed, Lord, please open his eyes and let me see. So the Lord opened the servant's eyes. He looked and saw the mountain was covered with horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Oh. Church, I fell into a... I found the Lord take me in a vision. I see this same thing right here. This man of God seen thousands of that this man of God seen thousands of years ago. Right here, the man, the man that was it with the, the man that was with the man of God was afraid of the, of the people that was against him. But then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, take the blinders off his eyes so he can see the team that we have. Oh man. So the man was looking at the physical armors of this world that were coming against him. Oh man. But Elisha said, Man, you don't see what I see. Oh man. So the Elisha said, Look, take the blinders off his eyes, Lord, so he can see what I see. Oh man. And when the Lord took the blinders off his eyes, the man seen chariots of fire. And Elijah said, Look, man, greater are those who are with us 
than those who are with them. Jesus, church, let us rise up in this hour. The greatest revival this world have ever seen is going to happen in the church. The Lord is bringing the church to repentance. The greatest revival the church have ever seen is going to take place. And the Lord said, babies, my children, awaken in this hour. Greater, greater is he that is in you that is in this world. Greatest it greater is greater is the army that I have with you than the ones that are come against you in this world. Oh man, I appeal to you, brother and sister. The Lord remove remove these. The Lord take me in the spirit, man. And I see the same way Elisha asked for the man to take blinders off his eyes so he can see, man, light. So the Lord. The Lord revealed to me through through the spirit, the Holy Spirit, open my eyes and I see in the spirit and I see chariots of fire. Just like Elisha said, just like uh, just like the man of God seen thousands of years ago. So the same God that revealed it back then is the same God that is revealing it right now. Twenty nineteen. And the Lord, I seen chariots of fire. I see chariots of fire, church. So why would the Lord show that the Lord said, church, babies, y'all, I know y'all see a lot against a, a lot of things coming against y'all. I know y'all see a lot of things happen, but look, great is it, greater is the Holy Spirit that is in you that is in the world. And the Lord said, church, y'all are part of a heavenly army. And in this vision, church, there were chariots of fire. Unquenchable fire, holy fire. John told John told um when John John the Baptist was baptized in the wilderness, John said, Look, there's one coming after me that sounded as I'm not worthy to tie, unloose. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. And in this vid in church, we must get to understand that through Christ, we are a spiritual body. We are baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And this fire give us access to a heavenly army because we are seated in high places with Christ Jesus, our Lord, according to scripture. In church, in this vision, church, I seen chariots of fire, unquenchable fire. I seen the heavenly army. See, church, we right now we walk this life, church. Let us not walk in fear or doubt, but walk in power because it's God leading us. I don't care, church. We are weak, but in Christ we are strong. Why? Because Christ Jesus sits on the throne in heaven, and through Him we have a heavenly army that fight for us. Oh, man. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, hear me, brothers and sisters, hear me, brothers and sisters, hear me, brothers and sisters, that we have an heavenly, we have a heavenly army, brothers and sisters, and brothers and sisters, in this heavenly army, in this, in, in this heavenly army, brothers and sisters, I seen a quenchable fire. So let me read the story again. Elisha prayed, Lord, please open his eyes and let him see the Lord opened the eye, opened his servant eyes. He looked and saw the mountain that was covered with horrors and char- chariots of fire all around, all around Elisha. Church, I pray today by the Spirit that all of our eyes will be open and we will know that the Lord have chariots of fire. I pray that blind will be moved, that we will see the Lord in his glory like we never have seen him before. But because church... I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the same way the Lord revealed this thousand years ago. I seen this a few days ago. I, the Lord, take me in the spirit, man. And I see endless fire for those who are unrighteous. And I see the Lord revealed to me. It was twofold. And I see in this chariots of fire. And this chariots of fire. Chariots of fire. Why? Because greater, greater. It's the armor that is with us, church, than the armors of this world. Listen, we are in the build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen. There are many people will come against the church, the one world government out. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. And, uh, and the, the Lord is saying, the Father is saying through the Spirit, listen, babies, listen, my children. Listen, there's a heavenly army with you. There's a there's chariots or army in the spirit all around you. Greater that greater is me that is with you than the armies of this world. 
Brothers and sisters, I seen chariots of fire, just like the brother Elisha said. I seen chariots of fire, endless fire for those who are unrighteous and chariots of fire. It was fire. It was fire. All around me, brothers and sisters. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. And here is the great revelation. The endless fire protected the, the in, in the vision. The endless fire, the, the, the endless fire, the endless fire came, but it didn't harm the man because he obeyed the gospel. Oh, man. Endless fire came, but the man was protected because he was covered with the glory of God. And that glory is the gospel, the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And because that man was in the gospel, he had chariots of fires on his side because Christ Jesus is the commander in chief of God's army. You know what we see? Jesus. Serious account, brothers and sisters. What do we say, church? Let us obey the gospel and find confidence in the Lord because he is our keeper. Jesus, man. Serious account, brothers and sisters. Very serious account, man. Okay. Moving along. And as, as I get a revelation of this, man, it even more, it even more causes, it, it should even more cause us to walk righteously according to the will of our Lord through the grace that he has given us that me, we may please the Father heart and not our own. And the only way for us to please the Father heart is to obey the will of the Father. And that will is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And through that will, we bear fruit that will up into eternal life by his spirit, who is the fruit of God. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. Good. What do we say, church? Let our minds be renewed daily by being transformed in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Why? Because this world is a highway of wilderness drenched in sin. Jesus. I'm going to repeat that. Oh, man. Jesus said the works of this world is evil. Church, the works of this world is evil. And this world is a highway, is a highway of wilderness drenched in sin. Oh, man. But the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus is a well of living water that springs up into eternal life. Jesus, man. What do we say? Let us cling to salvation and not the, the lust and the pride in the wealth of this world. Because true riches is find, found in God Almighty. And that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Serious account, brother and sister. Serious account. Okay? The righteousness of God is pure gold. The goal of this world is will perish, but the righteousness of God is pure gold, and it is a golden staff for those because God's hand is mighty, and he keeps those who are surrendered to his feet. How does man surrender to the feet of God? By humbling himself through repentance and accepting Christ Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and by doing the will of the Father that testifies that Jesus is his Lord and Savior, and as he is the Lord and Savior, Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit awaken him to every will and power of God that God reveals through him in his son. And that son is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. Serious statement, brothers and sisters. Okay. And as we move forward, as we move forward, as we move forward, man. Um I was spend I was spending time with the Lord and um I spent a time with the Lord and um the book of Joshua. So let's go to the book of Joshua, man. Very serious account, man. Go to Joshua 4. 8 through 9. Okay. Uh let's go. It said, um It said, uh, we're gonna start at verse 6. Six, um, so that this will be. Uh, let me see. We'll start at verse four. Joshua four, verse four. So Joshua summoned the twelve men he had selected from the Israelites, the one man for one man for each tribe, and said to them, "Go across the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you lift a stone unto his shoulder." One for each of the Israelite tribes, so that this will be a sign, a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean to you? You should tell them, the waters 
of the Jordan were cut off in front of the ark of the Lord's covenant. The Jordan waters were cut off. Therefore, these it said the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the ark of the Lord covenant. Oh man. When they crossed the Jordan, the Jordan waters were cut off. Therefore, these stones will always be a memorial for the Israelites. Oh man. Keep reading. The Israelites did not did, did did just as Joshua had commanded them. The twelve men took stones from the middle of the Jordan, one for each of the Israelite tribes, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the camp and set them down there. Joshua also set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing, and the stones are there to this day. The priests carrying the Ark continued standing in the middle of Jordan until everything was completed that the Lord commanded Joshua to the people in keeping with all Moses had commanded Joshua. Oh, man. And as I was spending time with the Lord in this in this book, it revealed to me, he revealed to me that there was a foreshadow of me, son. Because he said, son, look how I, I performed a miracle for them. How they took my Ark of the Covenant in the water and the priest stood in the water and they walked across the Jordan on those stones and they crossed to the other side for the promised land. Oh, man. Jesus, man. The Lord said, son, there was a foreshadow of me. The Lord said, there was a foreshadow of me walking on water while my 12 disciples were in the boat. The Lord said, like so, how that priest was standing in the water until all things were completed. Son, like so, I'm standing on the water right now until all things are completed. He said, son, that ark represented, that ark, that ark that their priest, that ark that their priest held in the water represented me. Why, Lord? He said, son, I am the ark of God, Jesus. Christ Jesus says, son, I am the ark of God, and whoever comes in this ark shall be saved for my wrath. He says, son, I am the ark of God because I am the savior of all men. He says, son, remember as my 12 disciple was in the boat when I was walking on the water, look how these 12 stone was in the middle of the ocean. He said, son, like so the 12 stone was in the middle of the ocean, like so my 12 disciples was in the middle of the ocean, was in the middle of the water. And he said, son, like so these stone was a, remor 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 was a memorial to the future generation. Like so. Every miracle I have done testified about my glory in heaven. That was a memorial of I am God. That I am God who became flesh to walk, 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 walk beyond, walk, walk a mom, man, that I may save them from their own sin. And the Lord said, like so today, I'm known for my great sacrifice to save man from all sin. And all men remember how I walked upon that water. Jesus. And the Lord said, son. I am walking on water still as I'm sitting on the throne in heaven. Well, what do you mean, Lord? He says, son, he says, son, he says, son, I am walking. He says, son, he says, son, I am walking on water. He said, son, that water that I'm that, that well, he says, son, as I am on the throne in heaven, I am standing on water. And he says, son, those water are multitude, tongues and people. Until all is finished. Like so how that priest stood in the water. Until all things was completed. Till everybody came across that water to go to the promised land. Like so son. I am the great king sitting on the kingdom. Sitting in the kingdom of heaven. Standing on the water. You know what? Standing on multitude tongues and people. Until all things are finished. Bringing everything on us, the Father is bringing everything under the subjection of under the subjection of my feet. For it is written, "I will make your enemies your footstool," says the Lord God Almighty. Therefore, so as the water of the earth was of the earth, and is 
excuse me, he said, he said, therefore, so as the water of the earth. He says, he says, son, therefore, so as he said, excuse me, he said, therefore, son, so as the water of the so, so as the water of the earth is under my feet. When I will he said, he said, help me, Holy Spirit. He said, son, he said, son, so as the water that was that is in the earth was under my feet when I walked on it, son, like so. Every tongue, tribe, and nation is up under my feet. Because I am their God and everything belongs to me and up under the subjection of my will. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. The Lord says here what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. The Lord says, son. I walked on water then I'm sitting on the kingdom of heaven, sitting on the throne of heaven, and I'm still walking on water and those water are multitude tongues, tribes and every nation. Because they are up under my feet. Jesus, Jesus man. And that's a serious account, man. A serious account. And as I spent time with the Lord right here in this chapter, the Lord says, son, the trumpets of the Lord are blasting. Man. And every man that have made himself a wall out of the love and lust for this world will be made low because he walked in pride and not humility. Oh, man. And everyone that have walked in pride and not humility will be thrown, will be cast out into the outer darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing their teeth. And the Lord began to break this down to me. He said, son, you know how, son, when I'm with you and when I'm quiet, when you're being tested, when I, when I, when I, when, when he said, son, I, you remember, you know, when you're being tested, when I'm taking you through a season, you're being tested. I said, yes, I'm saying, I'm saying, yes, Lord. And he said, son, he said, son, you see how I get quiet when you're testing to see what you have learned? I said, yes, Lord. He said, son, you see how sometimes you go to, you go to, you go to panicking like that, Lord, speak to me, speak to me. I said, yes, Lord. He said, son. And I began to think, I'm like, Lord, you're right, Lord. If you get quiet on me for a moment, I'm about to go crazy. I'm about to go crazy. Like, Lord, man, daddy, speak to me, baby. Speak to me. I need you. I can't live without you, Lord. And you speak to me. I find so much joy like daddy. Thank you. He said, son, if I'm training you and that's how you feel when I'm not speaking to you, how much more will people weep and gnash teeth? When I won't speak to them, when I cast them out of my kingdom, I said, oh, man, I said, man, Lord, you can stop talking to me for a minute and I'm about to go crazy. I only can imagine how people will weep. See, when people weep in national teeth, it's not only the unquenchable fire going to make them weep. But let me tell you something that the Lord was revealed going to make people weep. What's going to make them weep is they're going to get a revelation that God is the truth. And he is he was so gracious. He sustained their life even while they was walking in pride. Oh, man. He sustained their life through his grace while they were walking in pride. And when they stand before him, that grace is going to be over and he's going to cast them out. And there's no longer his thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. They won't be in that no more. They will be completely separated from his voice and being complete out of darkness. Oh, man. He says, son, that alone is going to make the fire is going to make them weak. But son. Them not hearing me, them not, them not hearing my word, them not, they don't understand how, how blessed they were when my thou shall not were holding this world in place. And he said, son, everybody's separated from me. They won't be in my presence. They will be separated forever. And he said, son, you see how it will, when you are, when, when you are, when you get quiet, son, it's going to be a complete, complete worse. And they will weep. Because they no longer hear the voice of my grace keeping them. Oh, and I began to grieve in my heart. I began to grieve in my heart. And as we think about the church, this should compel us to share the gospel verbally from our lips. But not only just verbally, but by the way we live according to his righteousness. Because the way we live is a, the way we live is a message. Oh, we always try to preach sermon, preach sermon, sermons, but let our life be a sermon. The way we live, preach to people. Sometimes you ain't even got to speak to people. They can just see the way you live and they be like, man, why you love the way you do? 
Why you stand up for truth the way you do? Why you don't do this and why you don't do that? And then they come to a question that alone will lead them to a revelation of Jesus. Oh, man. Because they're going to begin to wonder why this man doing stuff completely different. Why this woman doing completely different? I see everybody else doing it this way, but why are they living the way they live? And then they begin to ask, man, why you doing what you do? And then you don't you then you point them to Jesus. You don't point them to you. When he comes to you, ask that question. We can say, man. It's only by the grace of God through through Christ Jesus who saved me, man. I was just like, man, I used to do so much stuff, man. But the reason why I live the way I live is because Jesus is living in me and he saved my life. And when they get a revelation that Jesus has saved you and he's the reason why you live in this way, it gives them a greater revelation that there's a different power living in you that is not living in them. And then they give a revelation that, man, this man is not doing it out of his own strength. This man is doing it because God have changed his life. And then it increased and it increased a curiosity. I'm like, man, how can I do? How can I serve the God you serve? Oh, man. And I'm going to tell you, that is the greater blessing you can ever experience. Because I remember working out on a route one day. And I said, Lord. Give me an opportunity to speak to this brother. And I said, and he said, son, don't force it, son. I'm going to give you an opportunity. I said, okay, Lord. I said, Lord, give me an opportunity. Lord, when I go to this dumpster, please allow for him to come over here and I can speak to him. And as soon as I asked that prayer, God answered the prayer. The man walked right over to the dumpster and I began to share the gospel. And as I began to share the gospel, I walk away and I walk back to my truck. And as I walked to the truck, as I walked back to the truck, the man walked back to the dumps. He said, man, brother, brother, I want to be just like that. I want to be just like you. I want to serve just like I said, brother. No, not like me. No, it, it, he's, I said, not like me. How did, how did, I'm, I'm trying to quote. I said, not like me, Lord, brother, but by the, the, the Lord Jesus. I, and I explained to him, if it was the Lord Jesus. I can't remember how I quote it. I'm like, man, it's the Lord Jesus. It's the reason. And he was like, man, how can I get like this? Oh. And, and and even right now, it's got me crying in the spirit because as the Holy Spirit moved at the dawn, so the man walked back to the truck. He was so impacted. He was so impacted by the Holy Spirit. He walked back to the back of the truck and said, how can I get like this? Oh, man. And then the Holy Spirit said, say this. The Lord said, Live by my spirit. Oh, man. The Lord told him, live by my spirit. And the only way man can live by his spirit is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and say, Jesus, Jesus, man. So when we live according to the will of God, when they come, we don't point them to us, but we point them to the cross. Like, man, I'm no different from you. That it's not me that doing this work. It's the Lord Christ Jesus living in me that doing this work. And he can do that same work in you. What do we say, church? Let us live righteously according to the will of God, that the power of God may be manifested in us, that bring people to the feet of Jesus because we exalted Jesus in our heart. Jesus, man. True statement, brothers and sisters. It should be accepted. It should be received with full acceptance. Brothers and sisters, this world is set apart from this, this, this world is set apart for destruction. And all those who obey the gospel shall be saved from the destruction. Brothers and sisters, let's take a break and we'll be right back under this. Brothers and sisters. It's, it's a heavy meal, a heavy word. It's, good. But it's, a true, it's a true statement, brothers and sisters. Because the Lord has come and He's swimming with hopes. Brothers and sisters, you must obey the gospel. Will you be fit to enter the kingdom of heaven? Will I be fit to enter the kingdom of heaven? Will I be fit to enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, it depends, brothers and sisters, if we obey the gospel. Brothers and sisters, to the statement, should be received in full acceptance.
Well, brother and sister, well, brother and sister, welcome to Revelation Live. Welcome to Action News from the Book of Revelation. Action News from the Book of Revelation. Okay. Uh, brother and sisters, um, the Lord said, Blessed is the man that read and keep the words of this prophecy. Well, brothers and sisters, we're going to keep we're going to keep it babies as the lord would say to us the lord the lord christ jesus our lord said children keep the words of this prophecy and the lord is speaking to us today okay hear the, the hear what the holy spirit is saying to the church he said blessed is the man that read it and keep the words of this prophecy well church babies we're going to keep it that we may be prepared for the lord return okay okay so brothers and sisters let me give you a quick prophecy update okay because there's a lot of things going on uh, behind the scenes and i'm gonna continue to update y'all that we are in a time of one world go one world government and we are in a time of global governance that it is not about uh politician about the uh, republican democrat duly note a lot of them a lot a lot of evil generals are going on in the politics but the deeper concept of the the the, 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 the deepest uh, uh concept of all every uh, war that is going on around the world uh, politically and everything that is going on in the events of this world is all about one world government because this are the time that we are in the time of the one world government and the mark of the beast okay and we are living in a time where they are creating a one world religion and they have already signed, signed documents a few years ago now see these things that they are not putting on front street but they have sound do uh documents they're sound uh document they've been they've come together in the year 2000 and they have even, even got e gotten even further and now we're in 2019 okay that they are in a time where they're making they're creating a a one world religion okay that they that this one world religion is the united nation which is the one world government is they have a a a, a uh i think a sustainable goal by year 2030 that they want to have everybody uh with a identity a digital id right right the mark of the beast they want to have they want they they and what i'm what i'm saying to you, you want digital id this is a precursor this is a precursor to the mark of the beast. They got many technology, many things going on right now that is similar to the mark of the beast. Just like the social credit score system in China is how uh, it is. It can be compared to the mark of the beast of how it operate, where you have a point system and all types of things of that nature. OK, but remember, last time we spoke about the bash, about the Lord reveal how you have to have a bash to check in and check out. That is how it's going to be. OK. That you're gonna have a you, that you're gonna be that they're gonna have people in their system, those that take the mark of the beast will be a part of their system, okay? Those that obey the gospel will not take that mark, will not be a part of their system, okay? So I had to uh, uh make sure I said that correctly, okay? Uh, so uh, let's speak about uh, the thing what the Lord have been revealing, okay? So we talk about one world government, we talked about the mark of the beast. Okay, we talked about the sustainable goal we just spoke about, and in the sustainable goals, they want to, they want to, they want to, they want to take away the division from religion. Like they bring your all religions together all around the world because they know today different religion are divisive. They 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 look at different religion um, as divisive. So what they trying to do is bring all the religions around the world into a one world religion that we can all believe what we want and we make it to heaven. Oh, man. that we all can believe what we want. That is complete false. There's only one way. Everything else is false. There's only one way. And that is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Everything else outside of that will send us into the lake of fire. Every other religion apart from Jesus is false. OK, OK. True statement, brothers and sisters. Okay. And we have to stand on that truth. We have to be bold in that truth that everything apart from Christ Jesus is false. Because now we're living in an era, era where they are creating a one world religion. And there are certain, and we have to be careful, brothers and sisters. Hear me, brothers and sisters. There are certain denominations and churches around the world have met with these people. Okay. A certain denomination have met with these, met with these people. Okay. Um, Catholicism and Catholicism is one of them. 
uh, Catholicism, right? Uh, the Catholic Church is one of them, and many other denominations outside of Catholic have have been have have been meeting with these people. You got Buddha, you got Muslim, all types of people, Hindu, all types of people are getting together in this one world religion out of out of from that there's an initiative from the United Nations, this one world government, a socialist government. So right now, right now, they're right now behind the scenes reaching out to different churches to be a part of this uh, peace initiative, religion of peace, religion of peace, a religion for peace initiative. This is another part of this false peace, this false deception that is coming. There's the only true peace is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. This false peace that this world is trying to give us is compromise and we don't compromise the truth. Why? Because Christ Jesus is the truth and Christ Jesus said that I am the way. And if he said and he said, if you don't believe that I am the way, then you will die in your sins. Therefore, church, if any church conform to this one world religion, we if any church conform to this one world religion, you will die in your sins. OK, this one world religion is a system of the Antichrist. This one world religion that they are creating is a part of the Antichrist. The one world government is a beast. The Antichrist is a beast. And this one world religion is a part of that beast system. Why? Because this one world religion will cause you to worship the Antichrist. Do you hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? This is going on right now. Certain churches around it's grieving, man. It's grieving, man. Severely grieving. There's something, some churches, hear me, brother and sister. Something, certain brothers and sisters, some brothers and sisters. Make sure you are led by the Holy Spirit. Make sure you got a relationship with Jesus on your own because certain churches, certain pastors, certain leaders are conform conforming to this region of peace. Some of them are behind the scenes meeting, meeting. With these people for a region peace initiative to conform to this one world government, one world religion. No, not every church is like that. Why? Because Jesus tell us in the book of Revelation that there are obedient churches. There are there are churches out here that are obedient, that are standing up for the truth, that are preaching the gospel. And the Lord Jesus loves those churches because they are obeying his will. We have to make sure we're led by the spirit so we can be in these churches that are teaching the truth because there are churches that are false. That is not teaching the truth that is conforming to this one world religion and leading the sheep of God astray. And Jesus said, woe unto you that lead my sheep, uh, sheep astray. You will be broken to pieces, cut asunder. Brother and sister, I appeal to you, brother and sister. The one world government right now is behind the scene creating a one world one world religion. See, they're not putting this on Front Street. You got the Pope going to Muslims signing signing an agreement with them saying that, hey, we worship the same God, which is complete false. Why did he do that? Because the United Nations also he worked with the United Nations. He believed in the one world government. You hear what I'm saying, brother and sister? And not only that, it's many denominations, church, around this world, brothers and sisters, that are conforming to this one world agenda. And this time, listen to me, in the book of Revelation 13, brother and sister, it said that it forced those that who would not, it forced those who would not take the mark. It's forced those to take the mark, okay? Hear me, brother and sister. Those that are conformed to the world already, those who are conformed to the world already, majority of them will naturally take the mark because they are already deceived and blinded by the system of this world. And I'm going to tell you what grieved my heart the other day. As I walk and as I look, and I just started looking at how traffic and every, everyone is moving back to place in this world. And it's this great grief and sorrow fill my heart because the Lord have revealed what's going to come in the next few years. And people are so caught up in the system in the life of this world. And this very system that people are caught up in, it will be the same system that will enslave people to call, take the mark of the beast. And I began to have great sorrow in my heart. And it took the Lord to pick me up.
It took the Lord to pick me up because I began to grieve. And I'm like, Lord, we can get so caught up in this world, Lord. How I mourn for those who do not have the spirit. I begin to mourn and cry because I can feel my own flesh, how it can combat and fight against the word. And the only thing they keep me is the spirit of God. So how much more will those be led astray who do, who do, who do not have the spirit dwelling in them? The only thing that keep the sheep of God is the love of God, who is Christ Jesus, who give us his spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that's going to keep us from being deceived. If we did not have the Holy Spirit, we would be deceived. But the Holy Spirit would keep us in this hour. And I began to grieve great sorrow fill my heart because I began to see everyone in the world who was not being led by the spirit and how the system of this world is leading their life. And the Lord picked me up. And. The only thing we can do is pray and preach the glory of God. And what give me hope is there's going to be a great revival that many will be saved in the next few years. The Lord Jesus came to me in a vision and directly showed it to me. He came face to face and showed me the great revival. And it was beautiful, man. So hope is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So church, let's get an understanding that this is going on right now. That this is the hour that we are in, that there is a one world religion that is out behind the scene they won't put that on front street but that is what they are doing behind the scene creating a one world religion so church be careful brothers and sisters make sure you're being led by the spirit make sure your leaders are living biblically by the spirit of god and not by themselves because this is that we are our that we are in in the time of the great deception. And all of this that is happening stems from this one world government that Jesus, when Jesus, our Lord Jesus come, he will crush this one world government to pieces. How do we know that? It was prophesied in the book of Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar's statue. It shows that a great stone. The bottom, the last 10 toll will be the last 10 king that would take authority over this one world government. And a great stone crate came from heaven and smite the statue on the feet and it tumbled to pieces. It tumbled down. Oh. That great stone is Christ Jesus. It's going to come and smite this one world government and cut it to pieces. Brothers and sisters, let us hope in Christ Jesus, our God, and find redemption when he come because we live for him and not this world. Because there are those that live for this world. When they conform to this world, they will worship this one world, the one world religion. They will take the mark and they will worship the system of this world. Brothers and sisters, a lot of things, the everything, a, a lot of things that I'm speaking to you about in the book of Revelation, the Lord have showed me direct vision that matches the book of Revelation, brothers and sisters. And when the time is right, the Lord will allow me to share it, brothers and sisters. And I've seen these I've seen some great grieving thing how people will be in this time. The Lord have showed me about the great tribulation. And he also have showed me the people, showed me the condition of the people during the time of the beast, the one world government and Antichrist. He showed me many things, brother and sister, and my heart is grieved. But also. I see the greatest revival that is coming because the church is going to rise up. First, he's going to bring the church to repentance and then the greater revival the church will ever have. Brother, sister, I'm telling you, brother, sister, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. I'm afraid to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Brother, sisters, we are in a time of one world religion, one world government. That's the fight in America, all around the world. Everywhere socialism, every, everywhere this great fight with immigration, socialism, let's not be deceived by the physical act. There's a spiritual war going on. For The horses are already broken and at work. The immigration, the socialists that is rising up in America, the rise of capitalism, all this stuff is work. Listen, we're living in a time, all of this that is going on is about one world government. Don't be deceived by the, the bickering back and forth. All this stuff right now is leaving, leading to a one world government. You want to know why the socialists hate nationalism right well now? Because socialists, the one world government is a socialist government. The head of the one world government, the president of the one world government is a socialist. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. This world is being painted in socialism. And because capitalism, nationalism is rising up, they hate that. 
and it's clashing, it's going to be a great disaster soon. There's a war that will break out and wipe out a third of mankind and the answer and the end of Christ will try to come without an answer. Church, let us not be deceived, brother and sister. So I want you to hear this, brother and sister, because these are the time that we are in. We are living in a time of one world government. And now they're behind the scenes. Going to different churches, picking people. To be a part of their one world religion. Church, let that not be so. If anybody come to your doorstep talking about a region for peace, a region, a region, a religion for peace, rebuke it, reject it immediately. If they mail your document, document, reject it immediately. If no matter where you this go for the churches all around the world, no matter where you at, if they come to your doorstep, if they mail your letter, if they invite you to a conference, reject it immediately because it's not of God, because it's about the one world government. Okay, so as the Lord give you that prophecy update, let us go to the book of Revelation. To the fourth seal, let's go to this fourth seal, brothers, let's go to the fourth seal. Serious account, brothers, serious account, let's go to this fourth seal, let's go to the fourth seal, good. Very serious account, man. Okay. The fourth seal said, when he opened the fourth seal, Revelation 6, verse 7. When he opened, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there was a pale green horse. The horseman on it was named Death, and Hades was following after him. Authority was given to him over a fourth part of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and by the wild animals of the earth. Pause. Okay. The Bible teaches us that three countries would come together. Country would come together. Uh, three country, main country would come together uh, during the times of the great, uh, during the during the times when they get close to the return of Jesus. That they would come from the north of Israel. To invade the land. To, they would come from the north and invade the land of Israel. Okay. Iran, Russia, and Turkey, and two other companies would do this. But Iran, Turkey, Iran, Russia, and Turkey have recently formed the alliance north of Israel, just like it was prophesied over 2,500 years ago. They recently, recently just came together, and they're coming close together as we speak. Turkey and Russia just formed a security safe zone north of Israel. And the Bible said over 2,500 years ago, they, they would do that. It was just on the news. I just watched a, a news channel, uh, a news channel on YouTube, uh, a, YouTube a, 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 a foreign news showing that they just recently um, came together uh, and formed a, uh, Russia and Turkey formed a security zone in Syria, which is north of Israel. And the Bible said, during the time when they get close to the return of Jesus, during the time when they get close to the battle of Armageddon, which is the same battle Armageddon that Jesus is coming back at, that these three nations would be together. And right now you got Iran, Russia, and Turkey in Syria right now. Iran got its proxies in Syria, Russia in Syria, uh, uh, Turkey in Syria, all of them north of Syria. It said they would invade from the north. They would come from the north. Of Israel, they went eight bay Israel for the north, and you got them coming close. They formed the lines, and you got them going closer and closer, as the Bible spoke about in the book of Ezekiel over 2,500 years ago. Why is this important? Because not only are they coming together, but the Bible prophesied a great six trumpet war that would come from the great Euphrates River. Oh man, and this great Euphrates River run through Iran. The Bible said it will release the four angels that were bound in the great Euphrates River. I'm leading with you might ask why. What does this got to do with this four seal? What does it got to do right now? OK, I'm going to tell you why. OK. Now, the great Euphrates River run through Iran, run through Iraq. OK. And. Over, over by this great Euphrates River will be a the, the great war that will wipe out a the great war that will wipe out a third of mankind. This will happen. This will happen during time. We're gonna build up to the great tribulation. This is what I've ever seen. And in the next few years, trust me, brother, sister, 
There's going to be a war. There's going to be, listen to me, brothers. There's a war that's going to break out. We're going to build up to the great tribulations we have ever seen. Christ Jesus is a few years away. And there will be, and during this time, in the next few years, there will be a war that will wipe out a third of mankind. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, this, this, it was, this war will start, this war will start during the, um, this war, war will emanate, it will start from the Euphrates River and then it will spread throughout the world, spread throughout the world. Now, this river runs through Iran, through Iraq, okay? And you see Iran on the news every day about how they're right now causing great chaos in the Straits of Hormuz. Now, the Euphrates River run through Iran, but that is not all what Iran is doing. They're doing a lot more, but let's keep moving forward. The reason why I bring up Iran, because it's lead to this fourth seal. Okay. It said, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice, voice of the four living creatures say, come. And I looked, and there was a pale green horse. Okay, we talked about this. These horses are spirit. So this horse is a green spirit. Okay. Now, inside of this four seal, inside of this horse right now, this green seal. Now, green is the color of our, the green. Green is the color of Iran. Now, this is not all what this horse talked about, but Iran is in this horse. Okay. Iran, the color of Iran is green. And you can see this Iran horse is rising up, which is Islam. Okay. The Iran, what is a Islamic country? And you can see the rise of Islam all around the world right now. Okay. And the Bible tells us that, that this horseman was given a sword. This, it said this horseman, um, this horseman name was death and Hades were following after him. And it was given, given to them over a fourth of the earth. And Muslim, the Islamic religion, is a, is about a fourth, okay? But let's move even forward, though. Let's move even forward, though. Islam is a religion of death, physically and spiritually. There is a death religion because there is a false religion. Christ Jesus is the true religion, and anything outside of Jesus is false, and anything that is false is death. So they're deaf physically and spiritually. Well, it makes them deaf physically. You know, Iran, they love the, the Islamic religion, love to behead people. They love to cut people heads off and they glorify death, suicide bombers. They glorify death. OK. They they love terrorism. OK. And it said hell follow them. Why? Because they are a deceived religion. They are they are deceived, glorified death, and that death will lead them to hell forever. Okay. So physically, you can see Iran all in the news. You can see Iran rising up. This horse is coming to its full combination full combination. Physically, Iran is included in this green horse. Okay. And this horse talks about the rise. This horse right here talks about the rise of Islam. Islam is included in the horse. And you can see Islam when they started, they, when they hit um, and they, when they hit the towers in America in 9-11. You can see the rise of Islam all around the world. Committing things all around the world. OK. And. As we move forward and we see, like right now, let me give you an example. How right now, Iran is hollering death to America and death to Israel. Okay. This is a religion of death. And the Bible tells us right here that this green spirit, death, followed them. Okay. So let's move forward, brothers and sisters. And they say, authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and wild animals of the earth. Brothers, sisters. Th 
And scripture, the Lord also refer to wild animals as vicious people. This spirit that is behind. See, this spirit that is behind behind Islam is a vicious spirit, a deaf spirit, but it don't stop there. We're going to move forward. It don't, it don't spot death because it's not the people. It's not just the people. It's the spirit that is influencing the people to commit death, to do the things that they are doing. Okay. So let's move even forward. Now it said that this spirit is a spirit of death. So we talked about the spirit of Islam that is arising right now in the earth. Okay. We got that right. We got that rising right now in the earth and we can see how it's on the news. It's all around the world. Even certain countries are fearing it. Like now certain countries trying to, Trying to trying to bring trying to bring uh, Iran back into their nuclear deal so they won't get nuclear weapons, and you can see how people doing all these things, right? Okay, so let let's let's move forward into the spiritual backdrop of the spirit because Iran is included in the spirit, this death spirit, but that death spirit is not on it. Listen. We talked about the black horse, the red horse, the white horse. Now we talk about the green horse, which is a green spirit. And we talked about Islam is included in it, but we talk about, we got to talk about the spirit. That is the physical part we can see, but let's talk about the spirit behind this. Because all of these four horses are clashing at one time. So you got communism, you got capitalism, you got, uh, uh, you got uh, the false, the false prophet. Uh, that Catholic is included and Catholic, uh, Catholicism included in every other false religion, every other false in any any other person that is teaching false doctrine is included in that white spirit. We got all of these four horses clashing at one time. Because these four horses are issuing judgment because people did not love the truth. People will glorify death when they don't have the love of God. When people don't know Christ or walk in the truth, then they will glorify death. When people don't walk in the truth, then hell will follow them. Oh, man. Okay. It's a very serious account, brother and sister. Because these four, hood, these four horses is four kinds of judgment. The, as we would read the book of Jeremiah, it teaches us that these four horses are four kinds of judgments. And in these judgment, these spirits are like wild animals. And the people who do not have the spirit of God will be consumed by the wild animals. Brother and sister, I've seen visions exactly that align with the Bible in regards to these judgments. That these spirits are like wild animals. The Bible said we war not against flesh and blood, but against evil wickedness in high places. And because men love the because man love not the truth, these four horses, these four horsemen that were released from the four seal would testify that men love darkness instead of light. And because they love darkness instead of light, they're given, they're being given over to their own desires of their own heart. That's why it's very important that we live by the spirit because if we live by the spirit, we won't gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay. And it said famine and death. It said famine, death, and Hades followed the spirit. Brothers, sisters, this green spirit is a spirit of death. And through this spirit, it will be physical spam, famine and spiritual famine. Right. It will be spiritual death. Why? Why? Why would it be spiritual death? Because. Why would it be spiritual death? Because. In the spirit of death. Hear me. God is a God of the living, not a God of the dead. Therefore, if this spirit is death, is death follow this spirit, then there is no life in it. And because there is no life. There will be spiritual famine. Okay. There will be spiritual death. 
next. We talked. We talked about that. We okay. We talked about. Uh, uh, we talked about the spiritual famine, and through this spirit of death. Why this spirit would be a spirit of death? Because the deeds of man's heart is evil, and they will be given. And because the deeds are evil, they're given over to a reprobate mind. And 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 through and through the reprobate mind, this spirit of death operates in man and the spirits of death to lead the spirit of death lead man to commit even more acts of death because they would be led by their own personal instincts of the flesh because they have not the spirit of God in them. Oh, man. This spirit will be a spirit like a wild animal because they did not have the spirit of God. Think about a wild animal. Think about a wild animal. A wild animal, a wild animal is led. A wild animal is led by instinct. Think about an animal. They look, they watch another animal, and they're going to devour that animal by their natural instincts. Oh, and this spirit of death will be like a wild animal, bringing famine, bringing death. All to those who did not love the truth. Those that those that love the truth, who is Christ, we live forever because we got the, the resurrection power in us, and the resurrection power is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. It's a very serious account, brothers and sisters. The Lord said, Authority would give unto this spirit over four part of earth to kill by the sword, by famine. By plague and by the wild animals of the earth, by the wild animals of the earth. So, brother and sister, during this time of this green spirit, green spirit, and it's coming to its full culmination, brother and sister, we will see more famine, physically and spiritually. We will see more plagues, spiritually and physically. It's a very serious account, brother and sister. Very serious account, brother and sister. So let's regroup. Islam is included. Islam is included in this green horse. The physical look, we see Islam rise. But the backdrop of that green spirit is death. And that death spirit is operating in the earth right now. It's killing people physically. And it's killing people spiritually. Because people don't love the truth. This spirit will bring death to them. Hear me brother and sister. These four horses are operating simultaneously together. In the physical realm you will see them combating one another. In the physical realm you will see them going against the grain with one another. But in the spiritual realm they're actually working simultaneously. Bringing judgment unto all those who love not the truth. To all those who love not the truth. So spiritually, if you don't have the resurrection, resurrection power of God in you, you would die. Why? Because this spirit is a spiritual spirit of death to bring famine to our soul, to bring famine to your soul. Um, to play, to play, to, to, to plague your soul. And Cause you to walk out this. It cause you to walk outside of the will of God as a wild animal. This spirit will cause people to walk as a wild animal, walk out of their natural instincts of the flesh. This spirit will cause people to walk in their natural instinct. Let me give you an example. During the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar lost consciousness and walked in and went and ate 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 food in the field as a wild animal. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Because people love not the truth and they walk in pride, this death spirit, they will be given over into their own deeds. Not that, not, not that, not, not, they will be given over into their own deeds because they're not love without the truth. 
when these seals are broken, this seal, this green, these spirits are already at work. So when this, this seal broken, this green spirit is broken, people are given over into their own lustful desire. And these spirit were brought judgment. These four seals was broken when them when that glorious scroll was opened. These seals was broken. It judged them. It judged them because they loved not the truth. And the, because these seals was broken, it testified that they did not love. It. When they, when these seals were broken, the horses went forth in the earth, testifying that they did not love the truth. Because if they loved the truth, they wouldn't do they wouldn't do what these horses say. Because the spirit of God would keep them because they belong to Jesus. But because they rebelled against God, they being judged and, 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 and they being judged. OK. So let God be true and every man is a liar. OK. So this spirit of death will cause cause these men, cause men who does not have the resurrection power to live in the instincts of their flesh. They will live. They will lose conscious and act. They will lose conscious and walk. Walk, walk in the instincts of their flesh. They would just naturally do every evil thought that is. They would naturally do every evil thought that is in their flesh. That's grieving, man. Okay, that is that is why it's going to be so much. That's why it's going to be people uh, getting killed by the sword, by famine, and by plague. Because this death spirit that will be in man, because they love not the truth. What do we say, church? Let us obey the gospel that when that these seals that have been broken to judge this world, we won't be consumed because we have been reborn in the spirit. OK. Very serious account, brothers and sisters. Very serious account, brothers and sisters. These four horses are already at work in the earth, brothers and sisters. They're already at work in the earth. They're already in the work at earth. So we come into our close with uh, at the fourth seal, and, we, and next week we're going to uh, in the fifth seal. So the first seal we talked about the white horse, which which includes the false prophet, uh, Catholicism, and every other false church that is not teaching truth. We talked about the red horse which includes communism and the peace being removed from this earth physically and spiritually. We talked about the black horse who represent capitalism. Okay. And the, and the earth being weighed in the balance physically and spiritually. We're talking about the four seal, which is the green horse, which represents that Islam is in this horse. That's why we see the rise of Islam. That's why we actually been seeing the rise of Islam over the years, like it and, and the chaos that they are bringing over the, the since 9 11, we've seen the increase of Islam. It's because these horses are already at work. Okay. Now, it's not just the people, it's not just, it's not only just the people, but it's the spirit of death operating behind them. But this spirit of death is not only going to affect, it's going to affect everybody who does not love the truth. Okay. And remember these, so remember these seals are being broken. Remember in chapter four, we talked about the great scroll and on each great, on the great scroll that the Lord, that our Lord Jesus opened up was seven seals. And each one of these seals broken, we were talking about the first four seals and each one of these four seals that were broken, these horses were released and they are judging those who do not love the truth. Why? Because it testifies that, hear me, brother and sister. God is righteous in all his judgment. Hear me, brothers and sisters. So we want to kill every lie and everything the enemy want to throw at us. Brothers and sisters, let, always let God be true and every man is a liar. Every judgment that God is given in the book of Revelation, in the book of Revelation is just and holy because it testifies that man loved darkness instead of light. So when he released these horses, God is righteous in his judgment because as these horses go forth in the earth, it testifies that they did not love Jesus. When people are deceived, they wouldn't be deceived by the white horse if they love Jesus. Oh, man. They wouldn't be deceived by communism if they if they wouldn't be deceived by the red horse, which is communism and peace be removed because they love Jesus. They wouldn't be deceived by the black horse and capitalism. Right. That that, that and, and, and being weight, they wouldn't be being weight. Let me, let me say it this way. Let me slow down. 
capital people won't be consumed consumed by the capitalism and the wealth and the money of this world and being weighed in the balance physically and spiritually if they love Jesus and they love the truth and not the wealth of this world. They wouldn't be this, they wouldn't be afraid of Islam because you got people today in fear of Islam, in fear of, of all these things. I uh, see the death of what they're doing. You got countries now that are giving them money, giving them money to the, and, and they're taking the money and doing even more nuclear stuff because they are afraid of what they might do. Okay. Now, not only just the physical part, people would not be deceived by the green horse, not just, not just Islam itself, because it's the spirit behind Islam. That it's going to call people, not just them, but they're going to call people all around the world to walk after their natural instinct as a wild animal. And people will be plaguing each other and it will be famine because the love of many is going to wax cold through all of these judgments. And these judgment is going to testify that people was lovers of themselves and they did not love God. So what is what do we make? What, what do we learn from these first four seals, brothers and sisters? If people, if we love Jesus, for the book of Romans 1 said that because they did not want to attain God in their knowledge, they was given over into the lust for desire in their heart. Let me tell you the greatest judgment. The greatest judgment is, is when God give you what you want. And when in these seals being broken is going to testify that men love the deeds of the flesh more than the truths that come from God. And because of that, they're going to be judged. These horses are sent for judgment, testifying that they did not love the truth, that they was lovers of themselves and not lovers of God. Because you, in these times, we will know everybody that was lovers of God because they will not be deceived. You're going to see those, those that are love of God. There will be great chaos, but you're going to see those that love Jesus. They will be walking in love. They won't be, uh, they won't be living by the natural instinct. They won't be living in, uh, 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 they won't be, they won't be, um, practicing sin. They won't be doing this world is going to be in straight chaos, walking every, any and everywhere they want. Living the way they want to live. It said the Bible says it's gonna be like the times of Noah, violent with fear of the land. People that's why you see same sex marriage all around the world. People are gonna be walking in a natural instinct, doing exactly what this flesh tell him, and the man of sin is gonna speak that it's okay for you to live what you want, live the way you want. Completely false. And and, and that dead spirit, and you're gonna see all of this stuff going on. But those that love Jesus, we won't be affected by it. Some 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 of us go, will lose our life because we're gonna be preaching against it. But as far as walking, we won't we won't live like that. You we will clearly be able to see those that love Jesus in a war that love this world because those that does not love those that don't love Jesus, you're gonna see these you're gonna see these horses judging them, and you're gonna see how you're gonna be able to see it how the way they live it because the spirit these spirits which is these four horses is gonna be plaguing them. But those that love Jesus, Jesus is going to have them in their heart by, by them living by their spirit. And they're going to be walking. They're going to be walking as if these spirits not even happening because they live in according to the system of God. And that system is the gospel of peace that came through our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Church, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for your truth. Lord, help us. Guide us, Lord. Teach, teach us your way, Lord. Show us your way, Lord. Lord, we love you and we need you to guide us, Lord. We need you to transform us by your righteousness, Lord. We need you to keep us from destruction, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you guide us. That we may live forever with you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being a great daddy. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for keeping us. And we thank you for never letting us go. We just pray that we please your heart. We just pray that we do your will, Lord. And we pray that you sanctify us by your truth. Lord God, help us to be better children. Help us to honor you more. Help us to live for you more, Lord. help us to glorify your holy name we thank you for being a great daddy an awesome God and we just pray that we will be awesome children by obeying the gospel 
Lord, help us to be obedient. Help us to please your heart. And help us to never turn from your will, Lord. We thank you. And we love you so much, Lord God. Daddy, we greet you with a holy kiss. Abba, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you so much. You are the one and only true God. And if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, I thank you for leading me to this place. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person, I pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, if you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life, brothers and sisters. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, okay? And then pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to a gathering that is teaching the truth because there's a lot of false doctrine out here. And there are the truth. And the Holy Spirit will lead you in that truth by building you in your personal relationship with Jesus, okay? Because God loves you. He wants to spare you from all faults. And he will keep you from that. All you got to do is trust in him and allow his spirit to lead you. The Holy Spirit, that is, who you receive by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Okay? And um, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of God. The heaven is celebrating. They said whenever a sinner repents, heaven rejoices. We all have, have come. We all had to come to a place to repent. And acknowledge our sin and to be forgiven by God. He's celebrating. He's celebrating you right now. Congratulations, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the kingdom. The Lord is celebrating. That's a part of being thrown in heaven because you chose to give your life to Christ Jesus today. Okay. You was lost and now you're found. That's a blessing. It's better than money. It's better than anything you can ever see is being saved from your sins. Okay. And um, ask the Holy Spirit to. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you together, whether that's in the house or a building. The church is not a building. The church is not a physical location. The church is a people. So whether you're gathering in a building or a house, whether the church is gathering, whether the church is happening, wherever the church is happening, wherever the people is gathering, the church is happening. Okay. So whether that's in a building or a house, go. Because the church is a people. Okay. And, um, and, um, and um, God created the walk of the believer to be amongst the church. He didn't create us to walk by ourselves, but he created us to walk in community, to walk in community amongst one another. So whether there's, so wherever, wherever a true church at, whether that's in a building or a house, wherever you are, ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to that gathering. Because it's paramount that you have brothers and sisters to help walk you, help walk this, walk out of faith. Because it is not good for man to be alone. Oh, God told Adam, he created Adam, but then he created uh, him a wife because he said it's not good for man to be alone. That also is a foreshadow too because Adam was Eve's husband. Okay? Adam was Eve's husband. And the husband and wife is the image of wife, the image of Christ in the church. So it is not good for us to walk alone, but it is good for us to walk in community out of honor to our husband, Christ Jesus. God said it's not good for man to be alone. So if God said it's not good, that it's not good for us to be alone, that it's meant for us to walk in community as a body of Christ, the church. To walk into glory because in that body he transformed us in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So inside of the body, we have to have a personal relationship with Jesus because we can't go 
uh, to heaven on each other coattails. So we've got to have our personal relationship with Jesus. But in that body, in our personal relationship with Jesus, he groomed us together as one body out of reverence to Christ. Okay. It's a beautiful thing, brothers and sisters. What do you compare it to? Like, I got a, I got a wife and kids. So, and my wife and my, my, my God will use my wife and my kids to shape my heart into the image of Christ. That I might walk, that I might be faithful to him. And it builds up my personal relationship with him. And collectively, we grow as a body. But like so, brother and sister, if you accept Christ as your Lord today, he's going to build your personal relationship in that body. That you may finish the race according to his will, his purpose, that you may hear well done, my good and faithful servant. Okay? So it is important that we walk in true biblical community. Okay? Because it's it's it's, it's mandatory from our daddy in heaven. Brothers and sisters, that's all I have for you today. I pray this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it keep you. And I pray that it calls you to walk in the ways of God. May it lead you into everlasting life. See you next time, church. Goodbye.